Our guest today on the occasion of International Yoga Day is someone who has done exactly that. Beneath her charming facade is a story of grit and determination. Nuf Al Marwai is the face of yoga revolution in Saudi Arabia and she was awarded India's fourth highest civilian award in 2018 in recognition of her work. Welcome to our show, Nuf. You must be very busy because uh, today is the yoga day and people yes. must be performing at the moment. So tell us how yes. it is. <laughs> It's very busy, actually, and I'm going to leave to the airport after this meeting, and uh, we're launching a few initiatives as well uh, for yoga. That's going to be a surprise. We'll launch it tomorrow. All right. So where are you heading? Uh, Ria, to the center, because I'm invited by the Indian Embassy to attend the Yoga Day as a chief guest. Oh, right, right. Nice. Uh, so uh, tell us that yoga is a practice that binds the world together, right? Like uh, it is... Uh, it has been practiced for a long time now. So tell us, how did you really think that, you know, you could really take up this uh, task and tell us how difficult it so was. Yo um, so yoga is practiced in Saudi Arabia since 20 years uh, or more. Uh, so yoga wasn't really uh, known much in Saudi Arabia back in 2004 when I started teaching and talking about yoga. But people get really interested so fast and they wanted to know more about it. And the beautiful thing in Saudi Arabia that uh, you don't see in other countries as well in the region, that Saudi Arabia's citizens themselves are interested in yoga, not only foreigners who live in Saudi Arabia, but also a big number of citizens are interested in yoga. And a lot of them are teachers. This is their full-time job, actually. And they own centers or they just freelance. So yoga is, I can say yoga is booming in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, and it had been a beautiful journey. People think my, my journey was maybe uh, difficult or yoga was not accepted, but that's not really true. It just wasn't known that much because it's a new sport or a new practice to the region. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, can you tell us the proportion of people like, you know, female uh, yoga practitioners or male yoga practitioners? So, were they like, you know, is, was there a disproportionate amount of number of uh, female or male in the practice? Yes, there's more females interested in yoga and more teachers, but also there are men uh, who are recently uh, started taking up yoga even as a career. Um, a lot of advanced practitioners and we're participating now in the world's uh, yoga asana championship by the world's yoga community under the united nations and the asian yoga asana sports federation and we have men participants attending um, recently we had a yoga festival in saudi arabia in january this year and the amount of men who turned up to practice and to join the festival was also an impressive number. So we have both genders, uh, kids, and even people above 50 practicing yoga regularly in the community. Right. Uh, so this may sound like a bizarre question, but, you know, while uh, there are a lot of myths regarding the entire practice of yoga, right? You know, uh, physically, people do think that, you know, it doesn't really work. So while imparting lessons regarding this have you ever come across any funny moment in your life where you realize that okay with this person it's preposterous whatever that person is saying but you still need to somehow keep your calm and still uh, ask them to you know uh, abide by your whatever your lessons are yes this happens a lot uh in classes when i teach because yoga is complicated sometimes uh, yoga is an easy practice, but once you start mixing uh, some asanas, let me tell you, like in physiology, we speak about body planes. So moves happen in certain planes, but in yoga asana, it does not just happen in the sagittal plane. It can be a move in two planes, like Parivra Trikunasana, for example. It's not just a Trikunasana that happens in the transverse plane. So it happens in two planes that you have to go you have first to bend by the side and then you have to twist. So it's considered kind of a difficult move. So to teach people how to properly practice yoga asana, have to be patient, have to achieve, how to achieve their, their goals and how um, uh, to, to take it step by step to master their practice and even achieve more and feel 
and uh, the benefits yeah that takes time and a lot of guidance and it's one of the qualities of the yoga teacher to be very welcoming very patient and to help people achieve their goals so yeah it had been um, a lot of stories happen some people feel frustrated and sad maybe but we try to encourage them mm -hmm. so to have sustainability in their practice and to look forward for it, for achieving more other than feeling maybe uh, depressed or not good enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because yeah, I can definitely tell you that you know, I've tried yoga by myself and it didn't work for a long time and it was very frustrating for myself as well. No, controlling breath during yoga practice and keeping the focus controls even the sympathetic nervous system. So, uh, it does not really, um, you know, you have to teach people how to practice yoga with focus and breath so they control their emotions as well, because um, that's the difference yoga have with other practices. If we speak about gymnastic, this part of focus, ahimsa, pranayams are not there. And that's why yoga is body and mind. That's why yoga is different and unique because yoga targets, targets different parts of your nervous system while practicing. So you can be doing a really difficult move, but you're still focused, you're still controlling your breath and you still uh, feel good. Right. And speaking of focus, uh, considering a person, let's just say, let's just assume a person who can't really focus or concentrate, you know, such as myself, really, who thinks like, you know, if I sit calmly, I can't really sit calmly to begin with. And if I do, my head goes everywhere. I am. Uh, can you tell us like how a person like me gets benefited from yoga and actually start, you know, start, you know, get their concentration? So that's why the yoga sutras, the first sutra in Patanjali Yoga Sutra, Adha Yoga Anushasanam. Yoga is a discipline. So you have to go through continuous, regular practice to reap the fruits. And this practice has to be maintained on a certain way. Like I said, yoga has the part of mindfulness. So Pritiahara, Dhyana, the, the, the meditation and the focus starts developing after you start practicing your asanas, your pranayams regularly and set the mood for the practice and keep up your regular practice. Your body and mind start adapting to that and start taking you to Pritiahara where you start entering the focus and then Dharana, continuous concentration and then Dhyana which is basically meditation, the uninterrupted concentration. That's why yoga uh, has principles and steps. Yoga gurus over years spoke about it, and it has to be followed according to the system, and it has to be asadam. That's why. So basically, you are saying that I have to follow a particular rule set in order to really uh, understand yoga. Yes. Right? Yeah, very difficult for a person. Yes, and step, very step by step and very regular so if you want to practice two or three times a week because of your busy schedule you have to keep it up you have to keep it up you have to find even 15 30 minutes in your day to keep up the routine tell us how to do that how does a person actually stick by that schedule because it is genuinely very difficult for a person who works like nine hours a day and then travels to work and then comes back home and actually so many thoughts are invading our minds so tell us what really like you know how do we find that source of inspiration and key yes today i am going to do yeah. this and going to continue this for a while so in the beginning, of course, it's going to be difficult. Once you find the suitable time, like for me, the suitable time is first when I wake up in the morning, everything is still quiet, everything is calm, no much calls, no much work. And I try to find the time to do it. But once you start feeling what is it adding to your day, the benefits, the focus, the calmness, the concentration, the health, the feeling of vitality that is adding to your day, less body pain, uh, better health, you will start being attached to it and you will not want to quit that. You want to say, no, I don't want to go one day without practicing because my body feels better. My back doesn't hurt anymore. I feel uh, in a better mood. I can maybe be more productive at work. So once you start seeing the fruits, you, want, you won't want to leave it. You don't want to leave that. 
So you will somewhat get addicted to a good practice, which is a very good thing, I guess. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you will feel the difference when you quit that, oh my God, what did I do to myself? <laughs> <laughs> because it's very easy to take up a bad habit, but taking up a good habit is a task. But yeah, I'm sure yes. once we get into it. I'm but sure. trust me. It takes a week for you to feel good when you start practicing and then you will start being like, oh, no, I don't want to go without that. Right. right. Uh, okay. So uh, tell us something about your organization, the Arab Yoga Foundation. Uh, tell us when did you fi- find that the first when it was founded and tell us how has been the journey for you? Okay, the Arab Yoga Foundation is an initiative I started in Jeddah in 2004, actually. I started it first at the name Saudi Yoga School, and then I wanted to expand this initiative to promote yoga in Arab countries. So I changed the name to Arab Yoga Foundation. And Arab Yoga Foundation had been promoting yoga in Saudi Arabia since 2004. And it became a very known name. But now we have a new organization in Saudi Arabia that is launched by uh, the Ministry of Sports under the Olympic Committee of Saudi Arabian Olympic Committee that is called uh, the Saudi Yoga Committee. And the Saudi Yoga Committee is kind of an official government body to oversee yoga activities in Saudi Arabia and also acts as an independent federation. So um, uh, this was established in May um, 2021. And uh, we right before the yoga day and there was still COVID restrictions. So that's why we had our first festival in January 2022. But that time in uh, 2021, in the yoga day, we signed a historical MOU with the Ayush ministry to uh, exchange in the field of yoga and to create better standards for yoga practices, yoga teachers, to promote yoga for health and well-being, yoga asana sports, and yoga therapy as well, and exchange in education and research and develop yoga on a wider range in Saudi Arabia and promote it for the Saudi society. And uh, also the Saudi Yoga Committee this year is going to launch more initiatives for yoga in Saudi Arabia, and we will announce it tomorrow, uh, inshallah. That is amazing. Also, so like you said, that it's a legalized sport, right? Yoga. But to th- till 2017, yes. I believe that, you know, women's sports were not uh, legal in Saudi Arabia. Is that right? It wasn't un- illegal, but it wasn't very open. Right. And with a lot of reforms, I have been promoting and practicing yoga in Saudi Arabia since 20 years. And a lot of Saudis took up yoga. So as I mentioned, women's sports were not very open um, at that time. So when our uh, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman started launching the 2030 vision and started empowering women in every sector possible. Of course, uh, sports and health and well-being and quality of life programs were launched and pushed very uh, strong. Um, so every woman who had an initiative in sports was welcome to come out and just uh, do their job. And yoga was one of the things because, of course, um, I started this 20 years ago and there is a huge uh, number of practitioners in Saudi Arabia. There is a demand and there's a lot of women who are actually teaching and practicing and promoting yoga and it's their full time job. Mm -hmm. So it's part of women empowerment as well. And I can tell you what happened with me uh, in, in giving a bigger chance to promote yoga uh, since that time is um, a big empowerment uh, for the initiative and, of course, for me as a woman in my country. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today and taking time from your very busy schedule. I do understand that you know, on the day of yoga day, it will be uh, difficult for you to join us. So thank you for making the time for us. And thank you, everyone. Thank for you. Your news.